Good evening. I'd like to call the regular scheduled select, uh, Berlin Select Board meeting to order for Monday, uh, March 15th, 2023. With us tonight are to my left, Flo Smith and Joe Staub. To my right is Tor Nelson. And with us also is Vince County Town Administrator and Diane Isabel Town Treasurer. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? Yes, I have, I have two additions. Uh, the Axiom camera discussion with the chief and the resolution with uh, Northern Borders for a grant that we've talked about a couple of times just to make sure we get that resolution signed tonight. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Hearing none, appointment of Richard Voltax to the DRB. Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion due to my other involvement with the DRB at this time. Okay. Victor? So I, I thought he was going to make it, but. Voltax is the B. Oh, it says Voltax. I thought, oh, okay, that's why it sounded vaguely familiar, but not completely familiar. I'll fix that. <laughs> it's a B? Yeah. Okay. They said it. B, it's a B? Correct. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll fix that. Ten and eight, yeah. Yeah, he came in. I think he talked talked to you. He's been to a couple of the meetings. He talked with me. Seems pretty excited about uh, participating in that of the town. So. We'll have taken, have this changed here on the uh, sign sheet, too. Yeah, I'll fix that. I'll pen and ink it on the, on the sign sheet. Initial it. I think, I think, I know you staying, I think you met with him as well. You've met him? Well, I don't believe I have. No? I thought he came to one of the meetings. No. I make the motion to approve the appointment of Richard Boltat to the DRB as presented to us this evening. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, does anyone? Because I don't know the gentleman. I don't know. He's a retired uh, school teacher, I believe. Lives up. What's the development? I don't know. It's Apple something up on up Apple of, Hill Street. Applewood, <laughs> Applewood Drive. Street extension. Okay. Yeah. It's been there yeah. for quite some time. Yeah. Living in town. Okay. Any discussion on this? If not, those in favor. Aye. 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 <coughs> Motion carries. You can, uh, when you, we'll have to sign this once it's corrected or? I, I can pen and ink it and initial it. Okay. That's correct. Okay, well, th welcome to the uh, DRB. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Planning Commission update to the board, Carla? Okay. Um, I think just generally I'll say that the Planning Commission, after uh, you know the last few years, has been very focused on the town center, new town center designation, and then the neighborhood development area aside it. Now that's completed. Um, and so now we're, we've been spending a lot of time, or Tom's been spending a lot of time, uh, looking for funding or, or you know, doing studies on various projects to improve that area and looking for funding. Um, and there, you know, there is a significant amount of funding out there, although I don't know, we haven't seen the benefit of any of it yet, but um, of much of it. But so we were gonna, you know, Tom was gonna, Tom and I were gonna walk through the sort of the projects that are being um, proposed or, or money applied for. Um, but other than that, you know, the, the Planning Commission has been jointly meeting with the Rec Committee, and so getting them involved, because a lot of the projects do involve sort of the recreational aspect of, of the town center in that area and the, and the bike path around the, around the town. So it's been, it's been nice to sort of see what each other's doing, and because and, I really didn't have much knowledge of what was happening. And, and I think that's a good a good model that hopefully we can move forward with. I know Vince reconstituted the Economic Development Committee, and I, you know, hopefully that gets some traction, traction and actually um, gets gets going. And uh, maybe we can collaborate with them as well in the future. 
um, just to so that we all sort of are working, rowing in the same direction, which I think is important. Um, but yeah, so Tom, do you want to talk about the, the list? <laughs> <laughs> They've got a copy of it, by the way. This is the list that. I mean, I will say so. Some of the some of the things that we we recently have been talking about. You know, we've been so focused sort of on the plateau area of the town. You know, we, we are also working at Riverton to to do a wastewater system down there to try to. So I think we've got. Do we have the funding for that? No, but I think it's so good chance of getting it. So we're trying. So that would be a good, really good uh, benefit to that area because a lot of the limitations down there have to do with wastewater. So it can help develop either, um, you know, hopefully some commercial uh, aspects down there. That store never could keep, could go because they didn't have any wastewater. So that's something that we're trying to do down there. Now we're going back to Bearmont Clear Road, looking for funding for sidewalks, street, streetscape improvement. Um, just just kind of trying to spread the wealth. <laughs> and, and before you move off of Riverton, uh, uh, back when the Planning Commission revised their zoning regulations 2019, they created this hamlet district down there, which includes the, the village of Riverton. And um, it's uh, the, the Planning Commission baked into that, that district. It's the third uh, uh, highest residential density. You could have one dwelling unit per 8,000 square feet of, of, of property. And, and it, uh, up until that time, it was one for every 40,000 square feet of property. So you could put four or five dwelling units now on where you could do that before. And the limiting factor has been and still continues to be lack of uh, septic uh, capacity. There is, and so what Carl is talking about, the Planning Commission is going through, is uh, there's through the, and the Planning Commission got a a village center designation for Riverton several years ago, and that opened up a, a, a bunch of potential funding. Um, uh, but uh, there, the uh, village center has uh, dollars for these community wastewater systems. So it's it's think of of your home uh, septic system if you uh, on steroids, right? So we're we're looking at uh, a, the the regulatory agency views one home of in-ground septic to base the same as 25 homes of septic. And, and so there's not a lot of um, uh, onerous uh, regulations involved with this. So uh, it's, a, it's a good program. I think it's $2.25 million that, that the, the Planning Commission has and the, and the Public's Work Board have jointly um, uh, uh, made to the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, should get on their priority list. I'm fairly confident we're going to get some some monies from that. When you talk to the folks at the at the agency, uh, we have a willing we have a willing property owner now, and uh, there are uh, impacts to the to the river down there from from poor uh, septage um, management. So I think there's a lot of good things in our favor that that uh, we're hoping to get fully funded at. Two two and a half million dollars, and the, for there's one site that's very that's that's actually the, the landowners on board, and he and is, that yeah. will be how many? That's that's about twenty homes worth of capacity. I met with a, a an adjoining landowner yesterday, and so he has some some interest maybe in joining. They they want to see the the tires kicked and and, yeah. and you know some meat on the skeleton before. Uh, 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 but I think I mean it was a very good meeting with him. Good. But then the point I was going to make is we also identified the, the study identified at least one other very viable yeah. site. Yeah. So it's so that there could be because you know 20 doesn't sound like a lot, although it would help because I'm sure there are probably 20 homes down there now that need a new system. But um, it, it, besides you know doing extra stuff, but there so it's not it's nice to have another site to potentially do uh, down the road to to help it out. So. How do so you, good question on that. Um, would that project be for current homes only, or is this nope. supposed to be sparking? That's what, that's it. Uh, okay. I mean, what this gentleman who was it wasn't yesterday because yesterday was Sunday, uh, but it was <laughs> Friday, Friday I think he came in. Uh, he's he's one of the larger uh, um, multi-use family home owners down there, and uh, he has a keen interest of maybe redeveloping some of those into larger larger capacities and this this is the springboard for for that to occur
Hi. Okay, so do, do you guys want to go through the list? Do you want us? I, I, I think what we've done is is um, there are, there's a series of grants and uh, other funding opportunities. You may have heard of the the state treasurer has an eighty-five million dollar pool of money, low interest money. So we've got we've got uh, sparked some interest in, in that. Um, at the end of the day, I don't know what version you have, but the, at the end of the day, we, we've we've applied for uh, can apply for about sixty-three million dollars worth of project monies. Um, some of it does involve match. Uh, the ones that we do know match on, you could see on the on the in the column that says match. Uh, a, a big one is the Scott Hill Scott Hill Loop that the Public Works Board is looking at. That's the the, the the final connection of the water system that we built in 2015. Uh, right now, there's a 1.6 mile stretch of that wat of our water line. If there was a break on it, there are no other ways for water to go where the, the system is is shut down. So, what we want to do is create a loop system and. Um, which that there is a, a break anywhere then in the system, there's another way for water to get past, but you just have to close some valves to get that past. So uh, the, the uh, Public Work Board has been working on that, we, um, and we've, we've baked that into a uh, three-project Northern Borders Regional Commission grant. The, the, the um, um, Scott Hill Loop was about uh, $3.7 million. The, uh, as we're as we uh, the planning commission has applied for but didn't get received funding for it this year uh, a scoping study to look at what they and rec committing are, are calling across Berlin trail it's a series of, of, of trails uh, connecting uh, Berlin to trails in Montpelier Barry uh, town Barry City and eventually East Montpelier um, uh, but as as we um, what we baked into this northern border is about two miles of uh, bike lane on Scott Hill Road. That is if we're tearing up Scott Hill Road to put in the water system, it would be the ideal time to widen the shoulders there. And and uh, and and Scott Hill was one of the key arteries in this across Berlin Trail Network. So that was about $2.2 .2 million, I believe. Um, and the final piece was uh, uh, another, and that the, the one, the, this bike trail was a collaboration with the Rec Commission. And the, the final piece is at the, uh, over the ice rink here, uh, the, the Vince has been working with uh, some of the folks from Rec Committee and uh, students and professors down at Norwich University to look at putting a, a, um, a canopy over the ice rink um, and uh, to make it eligible for northern borders. The thought process is to put solar panels then on that, on that structure, which would then take this one season um, use here to a four season use. It would uh, uh, put in two pickleball courts and a tennis court. Uh, here it would be undercover, um, and that was about eight hundred thousand dollars worth of, of project there. So, we we uh, collectively the northern borders grant is uh, project is six million dollars. We're asking for three million dollars of, of uh, grant for that. It's a competitive grant. Uh, Vermont, you had to you had to submit a letter of intent in early. May, and um, uh, the, they came out with a short list, and Berlin has made the short list. I think there was 80 applicants, and I think there was 24 that made the short list. So we are now in the process of uh, doing the final application, which is due June 2nd. And Vince, Vince mentioned this uh, earlier that it needs a resolution of support from the board to uh, submit that, that application in. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Hospital Hill. This, this is uh, we've asked for uh, uh, Senator uh, uh, Welsh came out with a request for earmarks. Um, we, the Public Works Board asked for ten million dollars worth of sewer improvements. 
Um, at the end of the day, we're having conversations with uh, that sounds the, the possibility of about a million dollars of, of grant available, which would replace the uh, circa 1980 main pump station on Route 302. Um, and so those conversations are going on. Uh, Vince and I have met with uh, Michelle uh, Monroe from Senator Welch's office. I think we had a, a very good conversation with her. Um, she then uh, pointed us to the to the director of the Northern Borders grants, and he visited us last week. And I thought he was I, I came with the impression he thought we, he was very impressed with where Berlin stands, the energy we have, and. Um, um, uh, Berlin Corners is is this area in town. It's a public's work board has asked for four hundred ten thousand dollars from the Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund. It would be putting in collection of wastewater in around this area, uh, going to a small municipal pump station and pump and, and pumping it uh, to our our. our uh, Pump, new pump station on uh, Stewart Road. The uh, <coughs> Senator Sanders. Uh, the the you know we're doing a uh, Berlin Town Center um, uh, road diet over there, and we've done a uh, multi-use path uh, over there over there in the final throws. So we we uh, pulled the planning mission pulled all those projects together and and. Uh, the Senator Sanders came out with an earmark um, uh, uh, and solicited communities. And so we said, well, we need $12 million to build everything we <laughs> want to do over there. They, they came back with, well, we may have a million dollars for you. And uh, so the discussion is that that, that multi-use path that, that uh, we've just gone through scoping uh, may uh, may be eligible for funding through, through Senator Sanders' office. And, uh, uh, Route 302 sidewalk. You may, some of you may know uh, that in 2014-2015, Town of Berlin did a <coughs> scoping study on Route 302, looking at a, a road diet down there. And you may recall that what came out of there was painting the roads and making bike lanes and such. Uh, so this is uh, this is a. Uh, a, a grant application to, uh, and it V Transit, I think it's due Ju June 1st, to uh, put in the first segment of sidewalks and, and, and the, the bike lanes that will go from the CVMC pharmacy down just past to McDonald's there at the bus stop. Uh, we've had, we've have, uh, uh, we have right across the street now the uh, folks from the Good Samaritan have, have those those homes there, um, people are crossing there. That you know, it's a very busy highway. Um, uh, I know uh, we've met with uh, uh, Jim Fecto, who uh, who owns property um, on Overlook Drive. He's thinking of putting in an application for 30 units of housing at the at the top of Overlook Drive, which would uh, add to the pedestrian traffic down there. So the uh, the planning commission thought it was a good time to, to be seeking some grant funds to to build some of that ped pedestrian infrastructure, and again that's due June first. Um, and th this one's a complete wag. I, I, we put in 1.5 million dollars. I I think it's going to be less than that, but um, uh, and you could see that that would require a, a town match of of 300 thousand uh, dollars. And we and as I mentioned, we've got. A couple workforce housing projects through through the state treasurer's office. It's uh, low interest loan uh, loan monies, um, and we have two housing developers have approached us, um, and we've we've had one uh, uh, developer to look at uh, infrastructure in the new town center. So we're looking at three projects there. Those aren't grants; those are low interest loans. And uh, the town it would be the conduit for the for the funds, um, and the developers would, um, uh, you know, uh, borrow the money from the town, and you could borrow anywhere from one to, to thirty years, and there's a there's a escalating scale of 
interest rates over over time. So collectively, we're at $63 million of projects, and, and uh, uh, we hope we can we could uh, uh, get some of these. We've got some fairly uh, fairly good vibes from the from the regulatory folks, but proof is always at the end of the day. So. Um, <coughs> If you take any questions, Carly, you want to add anything? Well, I, while I do. I just have one more thing. So the other thing that's been on my mind um, in terms of, because, you know, the Fisher Road, I don't know if anybody's looked at that Fisher Road scoping study, but, I mean, it would be fantastic to have that redone and with the roundabout and the, you know, the, the, the streetscaping and the, the, the lanes. Um, but but the, big, the big problem is this limited access highway over here. Um, and I, unfortunately, didn't have time to research it, but I really would like to consider trying to get the state to reclassify that highway so that we could actually have, um, so people could actually we could have, walk. you know, you can't walk on it right now legally. So to get to get it so we could have people walk from the town center to the school, um, you know, to, to increase the pedestrian capacity. Um, I know the town, I think it's fairly easy to request a reduction in the speed limit, but to reclassify the highway, I'm not sure what that process looks like and how difficult that is, but it is something that I think is worth pursuing uh, to make this whole, you know, project work over there with the town center. Speed speed limit reduction would help a lot. It really would. But it wouldn't allow us to use it for access yeah. points. But you start with a loan and then yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, but but then anyway, I, I will look into that. But I just wanted to throw that out there because I think it's something we should be thinking about. And I know we've probably taken way more time than we were supposed to. But does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Those are very valid points. So glad that you brought that up. I know we talked about that. Quite some time ago. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, I mean, it, that would be that would be such a such a bonus to get rid of that that designation for that highway. Mm -hmm. And I know it's right off the interstate, but it's a short stretch of highway, and I really think that you know from the you know from the stoplights down, if we could just get that um, change. Or pedestrian. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. I mean, because there was talk about about cross make creating a road to go over to Granger. Yeah. All kinds of potential ideas that you can't do with it with this designation. So. Right. So we still have a lot going on, and um, we're still very busy, but different focus now. Thank you very much. Any questions for Carol? Mm -hmm. for me. Just appreciate everything. Thank you. Well, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna bow out now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Thanks. Good evening, Carla. Okay, uh, town clerk office update. Request for funding. Excellent. Always asking for something. <laughs> uh, so I guess the most exciting thing right now is we have gone live with our digital land record system. Um, so we have just a few weeks worth of records in there at this point. Um, within the next month or two, the company will be coming on site to scan back 40 years. Um, and I imagine that's going to be very useful to people very, very soon. It's pretty exciting. Um, so that's probably the biggest update that I have on what's different over there. We've been busy doing um, dog licensing, the liquor licensing expires in the same time and then the excess weight permit shortly after so we've just been doing a lot of communication with people trying to get their renewals in for all of those things um, I did want to see about maybe putting a dog license reminder in the up the next round of tax bills perhaps if that works out so um, just to try to try to get people to, to do it <laughs> um, the special election is coming up next week, so hopefully we'll see you all there. <laughs> um, to date, we have had 47 absentee ballots requested, um, and 26 have come back voted upon. Um, so it's just a start. Hopefully we'll get more people next week. Um, and then let's see, I think we, you probably know we've been taking credit card payments now in the, in the town clerk's office, and that's been really helpful to people. We're able to take requests for um, vital records, dog licenses, things like that online, um, and people can pay right from the comfort of their home. So that's been great. And so because of that, and our new online record system, I would like to make our lister cards available online to the public. I know a lot of other towns 
do it, um, and NEMRIC has a process already established um, that would be very familiar to people. So that that is what I'm coming to to request that um, it is a $500 one-time setup fee, and it's $500 every year. They'll update it at any point that we ask them to, probably after the grant list has been lodged, um, or perhaps after any um, tax appeals have been done. We can debate the timing of that, but that would allow people to go online and get their own um, property lister cards. So that's one of our, our big requests day to day. <laughs> So, who would set up the uh, lister cards again? So, NEMRIC would set that up. Um, if we commit to doing it, they can have it up and running within two weeks' time. Um, and basically, what they'll do is give us a link once it's set up to put on our website um, that will allow people to view them from the website. And then you would advertise it also on the website, letting right. people know that it's yes. available. That's wonderful. Yes. We've been trying to keep our social media presence there. Anything we can think of to post and just be out there, we've been trying to do. So if you have anything you want out there, let me know. <laughs> Any questions for Rachel? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. The only thing I have, Rachel, was my apologies. I missed the BCA meeting. I will forgive you. I <laughs> found the notice today when I was looking for my steward bill. Oh, so goodness. So it's Diane's fault that the steward bill was going to before. <laughs> um, but are you set on workers for the election? I think they were all set on okay. workers. I've got a couple of volunteers that we would love to have. The more the merrier to count because we will be doing hands. I'll stop by at 7 if you don't need Yep, me. that's perfect. Do. And I'll do the same. I'll be there for 7 for county. Excellent. Thank Does you. the board decide, desire to make a decision on on the module and the uh, I like the idea of it. Uh, I, I guess like my question idea. is what would be the source of what would be the funding for we're gonna have to find that we would because there's nothing that we yeah, obviously we, built into the into so the it's gonna be it'll be a thousand dollars that we have to find right I mean, okay. I mean I'm, I'm extremely excited about it I'm and I'm okay with the cost it's just where where would it come where from, it come from? Yeah. And then, you I know, feel that, if it's approved then we find a thousand dollars again I'll throw out ARPA again. We we, we have a thousand dollars there that could cover that. We'll put make sure we put it in the budget for for next year. Right. If we decide to go that way. So. Because it is an expenditure or a potential expenditure. Put this on the next uh, meeting. Morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. That we're there. We don't have to. Not. People have a chance to uh, speak up about it if they want. And thank you, Rachel, for giving us a great explanation. Absolutely. And all your research, etc. There's no questions, for Rachel. Thank you very much for coming in. Yeah. Thank thank you. Yes, good. definitely. Okay, invasive species control on road signs. So I had a call asking me to put this in front of the board to get their thoughts. Um, I've, I've talked to Tim about it as well. Um, there, there's two roads that there seems to be a, a resident or two concerned with about not weed. One is up on Darling Hill and the other is on Brookfield Road. Um, so they were asking if we could do some sort of treatment, how we could control it. And so on, and if I bring it up to the board, um, I think knotweed's one of the harder ones to get rid of. Even if you, even if we hired it out, you know, to someone to spray it, um, I think that's a tough one. I, I heard some from the state that that doesn't always work very well. Um, there's really not not much. I think you have to really cut it, spray it, and cover it to keep the sun off it as well. Yeah. Um, start with. Yeah. So, um, my due diligence, I'm bringing it to the board for a discussion. Um, Tim is not in favor of it because he said it doesn't work. Right? The best thing that we can do is just keep cutting it and, you know, other than going out there and pulling it up in the springtime, 
for a couple of years in a row. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe. You know, I could talk to Forrester um, and get their take on it as well. Uh, see if they've come up with any new methods of maybe treating it or how they're dealing with it. But Has there ever been any pulling of it in the past or has it just been? No. It's just, just the roadside guy. mowing and mm -hmm. away it goes. Thank you. I think the Conservation Commission has an invasive species they as do. a plan. They do. They're, they're um, I'd have to look at it again to see if the knotweed is I think mentioned in there and if they had any other strategies. Yeah, I didn't see anything there. about specific on knotweed. It was mostly okay. buckthorn and uh, burberry. Um, and I think there was one other one. Because there's not, there's really not a lot of uh, not we in the town forest right now. It's mostly on the roadsides okay. in a couple of areas. So. so. Well, I don't, I don't see a problem with, uh, I don't see a problem with, try, with uh, finding out the information. The only trouble is, is um, I think one of the chemicals they're using is Roundup, and that's that's not cheap. No, I'm pretty sure we probably don't want to use that around the pond. No, no it, it would be I mean, definitely not. I'd be trying and quartered yeah. for the most part. I'm trying to think. Uh, you said there was a, there was a patch of knotweed on Darling Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Tough one. Yeah. Was, I mean, from what I've heard, even the even Roundup and a few of the others don't work very well. No, that's it. So I'll I'll talk to a forester and see if they've found anything new that's more environmental friendly, or you know, I'll get their thoughts on it as well. And follow up with you after that. All the good ones they've outlawed. Yeah. You know, like Paraquats and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, any other questions on this? Uh, town encampment policy. Yep, that one was deferred to this meeting. You all wanted to take and maybe have a look at it and think about it a little bit. So it's on there just for discussion. Get your thoughts back, or if you want some, um, if you pen and ink any uh, updates that you think uh, would be useful. take those and do another revision and look at it again or not. Where's Montpelier and Barry with this right now? Montpelier has one in place. That's That was the baseline for this one. Okay. And they, they had theirs vetted through uh, the League of Cities and Towns as well. And was, was Barry at the table with this as well? Or no? Barry has a copy of Montpelier similar to we where they where they stand with that I don't I don't know at this point okay. um, but when I got this from them that theirs was Montpelier's was in place and Barry was going to look at it and consider it similar to what we're we're doing. This didn't change from the last meeting, did it? It did not change from the last okay. meeting. out to me the last time when I read through it was the part on page 11 under item F all dismantled camps will be brought to and stored in the Berlin town office so that was some, that was a subject of discussion in my opinion um, how that would would come to pass yeah I've got that noted as well and that let me you know, take a step further above it says uh, under C above brought to the town office to be stored for 90 days, but then further below under 5A says 30 days. 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I just, well, I, I guess I have, a, I have a few questions, I mean comments on that. Um, I guess first of all we should have the right to immediately dispose of something that's have sort of this here, a public safety threat. 
either based on the opinion of the town health officer or the fire chief or something like that. I mean, so I think we should have that in the policy to begin with. Mm -hmm, I agree. Um, I guess we said, you know, going along with, with Flo's comment, you know, do we really have the space available to store this stuff if we get to that point? I'd be just a little leery about storing any of it. Correct. Right. I feel the same. I feel it's I mean, a hard and fast no that we don't have the space for it, well, number so one, and what you just said, Brad. It's, it's, to me, it's more it's personal property. It's nothing we should be looking after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, I can reword the personal property if if we choose not to store it that if we do a cleanup it's immediately disposed of something to that effect right? well, I mean, after they've had a notice and, and it's such. Been discarded there's no point in keeping it uh, yeah I, mean, I would say something along that way they'd be immediately discarded donated or sold based on the preference of the the select board is delegated to whoever. Give, you know, give us the options, but yep. right. no um, understanding that we're going to keep it for a length of time. So you're saying not to, to have the ability for someone to claim it, reclaim it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because they unclaimed it. Well, it was, it was, it was possibly dismantled. That means we, we, we took it away, right. right? And so what we may consider, you know, not worth much, that's all they have. Well, I think... Is that not true? Well, no, I think, I think what we're trying to say here is that we're, we're going to give them a bit of a notice, right, that they need to move on, right? So if they abandon the encampment and, and move, Whatever they leave behind, they had the option to take. They were no, we're not gonna, we're gonna, gonna come in in the middle of the night and and pillage the place and take everything away, right? We'll give them notice. Um, if they if they move on and move out, whatever they leave behind, they've abandoned, right? We're not gonna be forcefully dragging anybody away, leaving property behind. We'll give them a reasonable notice. That you know, this may not be safe place for you to get camp. We don't encourage it here, but we do over here for now, right? So please relocate. And we're going to be coming in in 48, 72 hours, and we're going to be cleaning this up. So anything you want, please take it with you. We can do it, you know, put it in that context. That's probably cleaner and neater for everybody, really, that way. more comments on this and yeah if you have any other thoughts or whatever you know just can you send jot them down as, as a word document yeah yeah I can and then I'll uh, I'll take all the comments try to revise and draft something and send it back out to you ahead of time and, and set up put it on the agenda for another meeting down the road to see what we where we are with it thank you um, and before, I'm just going to you know, state my um, thinking on this. Before we get to adopting it, I would like for the police department to look at it, uh, especially Sergeant Fassett. Uh, he's, I'd consider our town expert on the, uh, on the situation, so I would value his input on Sure, we'll circulate it. And we'll have to have public hearings as well on it. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, I appreciate the input. Okay. No other discussion on this. Um, re review and discuss the approved letters for residents on Town Highway 74 and Browns Mill Extension. Those are the two in the last meeting we talked about uh, with Tim about throwing those roads back up. Uh, there's two letters in your package that I drafted, very similar, just going to different the two residents that are on those streets um, with the 
with the board's approval, I will uh, I will send those out to start the conversation with the residents as well. I guess my question is, do we want to just continue the roads to one request finds a class four road or a trail? Well, or do nothing. Um, the the question would be. If you throw the roads up and the roads revert back to the landowner, I don't know, do the people on 74 own from their house to the Route 12 or they only own to the railroad right away? I believe they only own to the railroad right away. So we'd be leaving them landlocked. So I'll double check that one. I think you're better off instead of having the road, instead of staying having the roads thrown up, is just having. Uh, cost light either four or a trail. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess my recommendation is reclassify as a class four, and then we as the select board can authorize private maintenance on the road under our class four road policy, um, but it still, give, still gives us the town ownership legal authority over the road. You know, at some point in the future, we need to upgrade it again or something. So re reclassify the one off of Route 12, right? I, I would say both of them. I'd say both of them. I would say so both. You, so you hold on to the... Uh, the other one, they, they, I believe they own the, the, the property, right? That abuts, right, right to right the... To the yeah, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying we should give up our authority over that. We can reclassify it, get us out of the maintenance requirements of it, but still retain the right of way on that. Well, that's, that's, that's the... Concept I'm looking at. Here. So okay. Brown's Mill is just a short five, what, three, four hundred feet of Not road. even. It's probably 70 feet at the most, 50 to 70 feet. And then feet. it goes to private it's drive. Private driveway and a single house right there. That's it at the end of the end of the driveway. Yes, yeah, so that's I mean there'd be no be no real advantage to holding on to that one. Exactly. You know, because we don't it'll never it'll never come to anything. But the one, on, the one on 74, that's different. On Highway 74 is a little bit different circumstance there up to the railroad or something yeah. on the other side. So the one on Browns Mill Road, if you're coming down with winter maintenance, that gives you the ability to maybe dump some snow off before you then make that turn to go on the bridge. Would it not? If you want, if you need, if you needed to? Or is if that You see what I mean? No, I don't. So you you go across go Cro across, across the bridge, the bridge. And up the hill yeah. for Browns Mill. Yeah, across and up. And so right. now you're coming back down, and before you make that turn to get back on the bridge to go to Route 12, if there was a need to go dump some snow before you actually make that turn, could we still do that? No, not really, because that's part of the problem now is. You have to plow up into their driveway to get rid of any of that snow from there. That's, that's part of the problem. There's trees. There's you know, there and on garbage day. There's garbage cans there. Um, okay. So, but the but thing of it is, if you throw the road up and let it revert back to the owners, then it's no different than a town truck going by your driveway and plowing snow into your driveway. Okay. Fair enough. So, Town Highway 74. If we, the, the town would still have the maintenance, need to make, maintain from 12 to not at least the railroad trail. tracks. Not if it's a trail, you just or give this four. Or a class four, right? You give okay. the owners of uh, Mr. Driscoll the, uh, the ability to take and plow it for himself. We just don't and plow can, that. can we do that with the railroad? Yeah, because we yeah. still have a right of way there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know if the railroad had a problem crossing a, a private drive. No? No, I mean, there's lots of uh, drives in Vermont that hmm. go through, you know, there's a railroad okay. crossing. So if you can change those around, then. Yeah. 
just have to change the word discontinuous. I mean, the, the railroad is no different. There's any number of far, farm fields that have uh, private crossings on the railroad. One, I mean, one is right down there by the sewer plant on Billiard. That field over across the uh, railroad tracks behind Capital Steel. So you're, you're you're crossing the tracks to go to a, a field. Yeah. Okay, it's not a full time resident. I just saw that as being a little different. I thought. It was so what I will do is I will change the discontinuous to reclassification on both letters. Yep. And I'll send them out um, this week. I'm fine, with, them I'm fine the, with everything else to, yeah, to, to the, the five June table. meeting for discussion. Okay. Okay, anything else on this? Uh, the uh, pool of licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I think the motion to approve payroll warrant 23 23 for payroll from April 23rd, 2023 to May 6, 2023, paid on May 10th of this year in the amount of $60,979.21, payable warrant 23G21 with tra checks 22945 to 22972 for payables in the amount of $29,602.83. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, approval of May 1st, 2023 minutes. I make the motion to go ahead and approve the regular select board meeting on Monday, May 1st minutes as presented to us this evening. A second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now your um, additional items. Yes, Axiom cameras discussion with the chief. Um, this is just to plant the seed. I understand you can't make any decisions regarding expenditures, but um, our cameras are failing faster than I anticipated. Um, we are looking at replacing four with all the supporting hardware that goes with it. Axon breaks payments down over a three or four year period. So what you're seeing here at the front of you is that, that breakdown from year to year for the total expenditure being in the neighborhood of $16,000 and some odd change. Um, last year, we were able to get some help from the League of Cities and Towns with some of their um, grant money. But I don't think we need to replace these cameras soon. Um, so I don't, I can't wait for the next round of grants to offset some of the costs, unfortunately. Chief, these are the body cameras and not the dash cameras? These or? are body, body, body cameras. Body okay. cameras. Yeah. But they don't do vehicle cameras anymore. They don't? And that's on, unfortunately, is the only game in town, really. Um, and they know it, so they don't really barter too well. Unfortunately, that's kind of the problem, too. I think when they first came out, you could probably get about 10 years out of them, and now we're getting three. Usually the issue is the battery starts to die out. It's not an option just to replace the battery. <coughs> Usually they change the models and designs from year to year to year, so we have to get the whole package to do that. And how old are these cameras? Um, they're getting on about four years old. Right. So they're for some of them, at some least of them the, I want to say second generation, but the second iteration that we've had. Mm -hmm. So I think we're probably at least, at least it could be three years. There have been several generations since they started. Um, yeah, not yeah. model numbers, but as far as turnover, times turnover that we've replaced them. Um, I couldn't tell you before my time. Turnover. I don't remember. We These just, aren't the original we ones. Just, that no, 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 no absolutely guys. not. No, no, <laughs> okay. we've turned over a couple of times at least. Okay. Um, we just bought two or three last time around. Um, 
this will put us in a better position. It will be a good chunk of time before we have to replace anymore, hopefully. So this will be on the uh, on the next board meeting as well for for approval for the funding to for the chief to be able to move forward on this. Mm -hmm. Just so you're aware. Thank you for letting us know. Sure. And what was the other one? Axing. The, the next uh, the other Northern addition borders. is the resolution that uh, Tom spoke up for the Northern Borders, and there is a copy of that in the package. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Bye, Chief. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. My only concern with this is resolved by the Town Board of Selectmen. I do remember getting severely chastised by Pat McDonald for that wording. Okay. <laughs> Not been aware of that. So how would you how would it Town Select Board. Town Select Board. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, got it. Now yeah, now it all makes sense. <laughs> severely <laughs> chastised by Yes, I, I, I'm with you. Okay. I'll uh, I'll let Tom know as well for the next round. Um, but other than that, I move that we approve the resolution for the Northern Borders Regional Commission grant uh, application and authorize the select board chair to sign. Can I second that motion? Further, was there a second? Yes. Yes. Uh, was any further discussion on this? All those. Well, I'll just gonna say, I know Tom. I'm sure Vince. It's put a lot of work into as we saw from the Planning Commission uh, update. They put a lot. They've been putting a lot of work into uh, these new and innovative funding sources. Most definitely. Just yeah. There's been a lot. A lot of this been Tom, the hand as well. It's impressive. Um, the dollars have been been able to find and go after. Any other discussion on this? If not, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, round table, Joe? Aye, I'm good, thank you. I'm cool. set this evening, thank you. Door. Uh, I'd just like to welcome New Business Town, uh, I think I'm saying this right, KOB Kitchens and Bath on the very Montpelier Road, uh, grand opening this Friday, so excited to see New Business in Town. Awesome. I'd like to welcome Wonderful. Where else is that? Uh, it's in the plaza right in front of the Price Chopper, next to the, uh, in there with the Aspen Dental. Yep. And Hobby Lobby is open now, too. Mm -hmm. yep. People have expressed a lot of positive yes. really great. comments that I've heard. <laughs> <clears throat> I have nothing. Vince, do you have any? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Mr. Chair. As a matter of fact, I have one item. It's in your package. Uh, you'll see an email from uh, Mr. Adam Goudreau, with the State of Vermont, with regards to the uh, Route 12 bridge in Riverton. Uh, we were talking about maintenance agreements. I contacted East Montpelier. Um, they said they thought they had one, but nobody could find it. I said, great. I'm glad we're not the only town like that. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I reached out to Adam again, and they did find one in the town of Guilford. So I've included it in your package just so you can look at it, get familiar with what it looks like. I'll put it on the agenda to talk about for the next meeting as well. It's about the maintenance of the sidewalks and what it looks like that they had to do with the state to get agreements on that. Because um, the, the state obviously needs, needs our answer soon to get moving on the whole bridge design and things. So. Actually, he needs a written confirmation by day after tomorrow, but uh, 
I'm going to tell them that we're in progress and it looks favorable. Um, we just need to work out the details of the agreement, what that looks like. So that's what that's for. It's information for you guys so that we can we can talk about what we want it to look like. That's wonderful. Going forward. I did read through that in its entirety and it looked good, but I'd like to look at it again. So that's great. Anything else, Vince? That's it for me. Entertain the motion to adjourn. I guess so. I make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you all.